All right. So we've always said that other than writing down your givens, okay, the most important step in solving one of these work energy theorem problems is to decide which type of energy is being changed in the question. What type of energy is being changed in question number one? Kinetic. It says it, ex it launches a 50 kilogram rock at a speed of 29 meters per second. All right. What do we assume the initial velocity of the rock was? Zero. Okay, so it changed the kinetic energy. All right. And for number two, what height will a will a rocket reach? What kind of energy is that going to be dealing with? Potential. All right. So that's what we're looking at here. Okay. So for number one, give them a mark first for their givens. Okay. Mass was 50 kilograms. Final velocity was 29. Initial velocity was zero. Distance was three meters. Okay. Next mark. Recognizing it was a work energy theorem question. Works a change in energy. Okay, maybe they had force times distance equals final energy minus initial energy, which is the same thing. Okay, now what we have to recognize here is that when sitting in the catapults, the rock doesn't have any energy. Okay, so its initial uh, kinetic energy is zero, so it's crossed off there. Okay, that means that force times distance equals one half mvf squared. So if they had something like that, okay, you can give them another mark for that. We have to manipulate for how much force was used. So we're manipulating for F, which means we divide both sides by D. Okay, so we'll end up with this manipulation here. If they have this, you can give them a mark, one half MVF squared over D, or maybe they went straight to the numbers, one half times 50 times 29 squared over three meters. Okay, and our final answer, 7,008.3 Newtons. They must have the units as Newtons, as those are the units for force. Okay, that question is out of five. Questions on that one? Okay, number two, mark for givens. Okay, the mass of the uh, rocket was 0.250 kilograms. The force used was 200 newtons. The distance over which it was exerted was four and a half meters. Okay, so work is a change in energy, work energy theorem. So give a mark if they have something along the lines of these two things here. Okay, either they have work equals delta E or FD equals final minus initial potential energy. Okay, they're asking us, okay, what height it will reach. So since rockets are usually launched from the ground, we're going to assume the initial height is zero, which means the initial potential energy is also zero. That means force times distance equals m times g times hf. Okay, we're trying to get hf by itself, so we divide both sides by m times g. Okay, so give them a mark if they had fd over mg, okay, um, equals hf. That should be down here. Okay, so a mark for that. And then Okay, maybe they went straight to plugging in the numbers 200 times 4.5 over 0 0.250 times 9.81 gives us 367 meters. Okay, everybody with me there? Okay, make sure their answer has units on it. All right, give them a mark out of 10. Let them see it. Put it in the box. When you get back to your desk, take out your stuff on Law of Conservation of Energy we were working on. Okay, so a couple things we got to remember about the Law of Conservation of Energy. One of the things is, is that Work Energy Theorem and Law of Conservation of Energy are very closely related. Okay, work is the source of the energy that will later be conserved. Right, once work is done to a system, that energy will be in the system, okay, forever essentially unless the system does work on something else all right so we have to understand that that's how work energy theorem and the law of conservation of energy go together and that's what this whole question number 5 is asking you about okay it's saying you did 40 you had 40 newtons worth of force exerted over 0.1 meters okay on this uh, 10 gram mass okay that's placed on a spring so if you exert a force over a distance have you done work Okay, 440 newtons times 0.1 is 4 joules. All right, so there's the energy in the system. That number isn't going to change. That energy could be kinetic, it could be potential, okay? It could be any number of things, but the total energy of that system is always going to be 4 joules. All right, now, if what they've done here is take a ball and push it down onto a spring, okay, what happens to the work they did? What is it now? once they've pushed the ball down on the spring.
be what? It becomes potential energy. Just like the other day when we, you know, pulled back on the rubber band. Okay? We did work, it became elastic potential energy. It's the same thing when you stretch or compress a spring. You exert a force through a distance and it becomes elastic potential energy. All right, if the spring is released, what will happen to the energy in the spring? What will it do? What do we call that? Ah, it'll do work on the ball. Okay, what can, what's the only thing energy can do? Mechanical energy can do work, okay? That's what it does. So if I have energy in the spring and I let the spring go, it's going to push the ball, okay? And the ball then will have its energy change. That's work. Work's a change in energy. All right. Calculate the energy of the ball the instant it leaves the spring. This requires no calculating because we already did the calculating. How much energy is in this system? Four joules. That's all the energy that ball can have when it leaves the spring. Okay, so it doesn't require any calculating, just requires that we remember the law of conservation of energy. Once work is put into a system, that energy will always be there. Okay. All right. If I know that the energy of this ball is four joules, can I calculate how fast it would be going? Sure I can, because I also know the mass of the ball. They tell it to me up here. Okay, so what I gotta remember is that EK equals one half M V squared. This is 4 joules. This is 0 0.01 kilograms. All I have to do is solve for What do I have to solve for? V. Okay? That's the only thing I don't know and that's what they wanted to know. Okay? What will be the speed of the ball as it leaves the spring? Well, solve for V. Okay? So I divide by half of M. Okay? And then what do I have to do? Square root, right, okay? So when I plug in four joules here and half of 0 0.01 and square root that, I'm going to get that that thing's going to be moving at 28.3 meters per second. Okay. All right, um, if it's fired straight up in the air, okay, how much gravitational potential energy will it have at its highest point? Four joules, okay? These answers need to be automatic. These are like things I would ask in a multiple choice question, okay, on a unit exam to see if you understand work energy theorem and how it goes together with the law of conservation of energy. All right, if I know the gravitational potential energy is four joules, could I figure out how high it would go? Yeah, because remember, potential energy equals m times g times h. Mass is still 0 0.01 kilograms. This number is now four joules. Okay, solve for h. Well, this is what you had to do on your quiz, isn't it? Okay, are these two questions exactly what you did on your quiz? They are. Okay, so divide by these two things. We have 4 joules over 0 0.01 times 9.81, and we'll get 40.8 meters. Okay. All right. Number six. Number six deals with what we talked about on Friday. What is that? The law of conservation of mechanical energy. Okay? Now, mechanical energy is the sum of what two kinds? Potential and kinetic. Whoop. Okay. In number six, when they're jumping off of the ground, what kind of energy do they have? Quinn? They have mechanical. Specifically, what part of that do they have? Because they only have one part of it when they're jumping. So they've still got their foot on the ground. They're about to jump. All their energy would be kinetic. Okay? They're driving. They're going as fast as possible before they jump. Agreed? Okay, but because their feet are still on the ground, they have no potential energy because they have no height. Okay, so initially, this number is zero. Okay, now how, how do I know? I mean, the question sort of tells me that, right? It says, they jump vertically upward from the ground. Well, if they're on the ground, they can't have any potential energy. Agreed? 
Okay, so just little things I got to read from the question. Okay, to figure out. And then it says, what's the athlete's initial vertical speed if they get to this height? Okay, if this is their maximum height, how fast are they moving at that point? Not fast at all. In other words, how fast? Zero. Remember, at the top of your jump, okay? Hey, when I throw that thing up in the air, at the top of its flight, its speed is zero because it slowed down, slowed down, stopped, and then started coming back down. All right, so at the maximum height here, the kinetic energy is zero. All right, so now I've got EKI equals EPF, so that means one half. MVI squared equals MGHF. Can I solve for V? Right? Is that what the question asked me for? They said, what's the athlete's initial vertical speed? All right, so how do I get VI by itself? Peter? All right, divide both sides by one half of M. What happens to M? Okay, what else do I have to do? Square root. Are these all kind of the same? That's what I'm trying, that's the point I'm trying to make. They're all pretty much the same. Okay, as long as you can figure out which energies, okay, are involved at each point, you're pretty much set because the rest of it's always going to be the same. All right, so that solves for VI. Okay, so VI will be the square root of 9.81 times 0.91, okay, over 1 half. Okay, and when we do that, we should get 4.23 meters per second. Everybody all right with that? Okay, we talked about quite a few of those on uh, on Friday. Okay, um, let's have you guys try this question. We talked about this. We did one as an example the other day. Okay, roller coaster has a mass of 1,600 kilograms, starts at the top of a 50-meter hill, moving 5 meters per second. I want to know how fast it is moving on the top of the 8-meter high hill at the bottom of the track. Okay. I'll give you guys a few minutes to try that one. So, what's the same between this point here and this point here. The amount of mechanical energy is the same. So this question starts out like this. The initial mechanical energy is equal to the final mechanical energy. Okay. Now, that means that EP initial plus EK initial okay, equals EP final plus EK final. Are any of those zero in this question? No. They all have a numerical value. Okay, there's potential energy here because it's 50 meters off the ground. There's kinetic energy here because it's moving at 5 meters per second. Here there's potential energy because it's moving, it's 8 meters above the ground and it's definitely moving. Okay, so um, we got actual numbers for all of these things and we are looking for the final speed. Okay, which one of these things is final speed going to be part of? What? EKF. So I can isolate that right now if I want to, or I can put in all the formulas right now too. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'm going to go EPI plus EKI minus EPF equals EKF. I'm just going to do that before I plug anything in. Okay, now I'll put in all my formulas. So M times G times H initial plus one half MVI okay, minus MGHF. Okay, does everyone follow what I'm doing here so far? Right, I'm just plugging in the formulas for these terms. Right, that equals the final kinetic energy. Now, they gave me the mass in this question. Do I need it? No, nope. it's in every term. Okay, Every single term is multiplied by m, so I can cancel it if I want. If you're not comfortable with that, it's fine. Leave it in, put 1,600 kilograms in for every single one of those. You get the same answer we do. Okay, All right, I like to enter less stuff into my calculator, so I'm all about canceling stuff. Okay, so I'm going to cancel all the M's here. I need to solve for this, for VF. What do I got to do with the one half? Divide. All right, so I divide both sides by one half. It's gone. Now what? Square root. 
All right, so I've got this big mess here that I got to plug into my calculator. Okay, number-wise, it's going to look okay like this. V is going to equal the square root of 9.81 times 50. Okay, plus one half times five squared. That was my initial velocity minus 9.81 times my final height, which is eight, divided by one half. Okay, so. Plugging all those in. All right, so I'll have 9.81 okay, times 50 okay, plus 0.5 times 25 okay, minus 9.81 times 8. Divided by 0.5, square root that, and it's moving at 29 meters per second on the top of the 8 meter hill. Last year, there was a question just like that on both the physics unit exam and the final exam. Okay? I mean, really, do all these law of conservation of energy questions work the same? You're either being asked to solve for a speed, in which case, that'll be your formula, or you're asked to solve for a height. Okay, it's just algebra, right? But it's always going to be pretty much the same method. Okay, is this making sense to people? Okay, we're going to practice that a little bit today, probably a little bit more tomorrow. Okay, we'll talk about efficiency on Thursday, do a little thermodynamics review. Okay, on Friday, unit exam review um, on Monday, and then you have your unit exam on the 11th. Okay, so it's all coming up here pretty quick. Okay, everybody with me there? Yeah. Sorry, what am I saying here? Your unit exam's on the 16th. Yeah, that's Tuesday. That works. Sorry, I had the wrong week in my mind here. That's what happens when you get old. It sucks. First the mind goes, and then the body goes. Or at least by the time the body goes, your mind doesn't know it anymore. Okay, uh, so i got a worksheet for you here, guys, that will start. Okay, this kind of covers a little bit of everything. All right, on the front... On the front, you start out with just some work problems, work energy theorem problems. Then there's some that are to do with gravitational potential energy and also work. Oh, is my second period class I didn't give this to? Okay, pass those to the front of the rolls and I'll collect them again. Okay, um, the third section, work in kinetic energy. So you got force times distance. Okay, and then listening, please. Just check, okay? Conservation of mechanical energy, so that'll be the EI equals EF stuff we've been working on. And then on the back, okay, there's kind of a bit of similar stuff on the back. Okay, lots of practice stuff here for you, right? So you can use this for getting good at it as well as reviewing for the unit exam, etc. Okay, if you already have that, just pass it back forward because obviously I'll need them for my period two class. For number... For number seven here, okay, it says the shot putter uh, puts a shot that has a weight of 71.1 newtons. Weight is the force of gravity. On your formula sheet, the force of gravity looks like this. Okay, the formula for the force of gravity is on your formula sheet. You probably This will probably be the only time you use it. M times G. What is M times G part of? So they've already multiplied M and G together for you, right? All you have to do is multiply by H, okay? So if you want to find the change in potential energy, you take your 71.1 and multiply by H, and you'll get the potential energy at each point, and then all you have to do is subtract, right? Does that make sense? It's kind of tricky because we never did really talk about that, okay? But force of gravity is M times G. I wouldn't do that on a test, okay? Just because it's something we talk more about in Physics 20. Once in a while you run into it so you have the formula. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Dirty trick. Yep. Okay. So number 14 is a law of conservation of energy question.
Okay, she's leaving the ground, which means when she leaves the ground, she only has what kind of energy? Kinetic, otherwise she wouldn't leave the ground, right? Okay, so she has only kinetic at the beginning, so we got EI equals EF, okay? And we know that initially her mechanical energy is all kinetic, and when she's at her maximum height, all her energy will be potential, okay? All right, so that's going to mean one-half MVI squared equals MGHF, right? We're solving for her final height. So we divide both sides by MG. Yeah? Most common mistake there is sometimes people square root for some reason and they don't need to. Okay? Right? So all we're doing is multiplying 1 half times her 9 squared, okay, divided by 9.81, and that'll give us our 4.12. Okay? Is that it? It cancels, yeah. Okay, any other ones, guys?